Hello, hello, what's up guys? Two days ago, Apple released Mac OS Tahoe 26 Beta 3 along with other beta updates. So, what does it mean for the Open Core Legacy Patcher support? So, as we already know, Mac OS Tahoe 26 is the last update for Intel Macs. As Apple announced themselves, because they do not want to give you a huge surprising news when they will announce the WWDC 2026. So you should prepare yourself for upgrading to Apple Silicon. So, so Mac OS 26 is a brand new Mac OS. As we already know that Apple has introduced their almighty liquid glass redesign. It's a huge update. So as we can see, the list for the compatible devices, it's com it's very disappointing for me because as compared with last year, uh, wait a minute, 2017 was the, la was the oldest Mac to support macOS Sequoia. And this year, a MacBook Air was completely chipped off. So, yeah, as we already know that the Apple wants to just get off the Intel Macs and transition to Apple Silicon. Like, Rosetta is staying with us until 2026 or 7. I don't know, like, when it will get the uh, end of support too. So, okay. And before we start anything, one of the main core developers, Michael Gramaluk, uh has left the open core legacy patcher like he has like we can read this later i will give you the link in the description below but he tells about one of his best stories that uh, how he found open core legacy patcher with his best friend tenakji so here are some of his milestones as you can see but what does it leave for the Mac OS Tahoe 26? So, always before th before that, the Mac Hologramalook used to post the issues, but this year, there's a huge change, because Tenek G has told us about all of this. So, okay, let's read out all of it. And the WWDC has passed by, and this time it is bittersweet as Apple has officially declared Mac OS Tahoe 26 to be the last version to support Intel Mac. We are already we already know, and here are some lists of challenges that the patcher needs to overcome until this fall. So let's discuss them detail by detail. Dropped models. So according to that, seven models has been dropped. And what's the T2 challenges? So, as we already know that one of the devices that were dropped by Apple back in Mac OS Sequoia are still not fixed by Open Core Legacy Patcher. We do not know what are the real reasons that when T2 machines, like T2 security chips, the dropped models are tried to be booted through Open Core package, it shows a kernel panic and does not reach until installation screen. So, there is no S teammate when these two T2 machines will be supported. Let's see and hope for the best. iMac 9S, support. So with Beta 2, Apple has removed Apple HDX, responsible for analog audio support. So one of the main reasons for this is that already Mac OS 26 has a huge size. Compared to the last years, it's 2 more GB. GBs. So it's total 17 GBs to install the IPSW or maybe install a system package. So the Apple just had to remove the unnecessary things to decrease the size. Okay. There has been reports of firewall being turned on automatically with installation of Tahoe leading to issues with volume decryption. So we will discuss it in detail. In detail. There is an casualty of the OS 
only supporting TP Max, which handles firewall to T2 security chips. This should be fixed using APFS EFI from Sequoia, but remains to be tested. Okay, the but still it remains to be tested. We are not sure that this is a permanent solve uh, solution. Graphics support. And as we already know that Apple has introduced a new graphics redesign since iOS 7, which is liquid glass. So metal all the metal processors, metal 31001 shows promising results. As you can see, MacBook Air 2015 looks very beautiful. Uh, new icons, and this is a beta one. Okay. So the Metal 3802 it's looking very promising. I cannot still believe, but I can see my Mac Book Pro late 2013 on Mac OS Tahoe this year. But what's the problem with non-metals? As you already know, non-metals is something very different, and metals are something very different. Non-metals have serious bugs. You can see here, the liquid glass is not supported by Apple. So this is a clear, clear interface, MacBook 13 inch May 2009. So, as they already say that, Instead, workarounds for a usable interface will be implemented. So, if you really want liquid glass to work, the upgrading to metal processors is recommended. So, Kova, Kovas Edu and Estian Bot, thank you very much for showing the concern. Okay, general patches needing update. So, according to the Open Core Legacy Patch developers, there are some Patches that have been identified as being broken completely or partially. So, this would require additional work until the winter 2025. And these are the issues wireless T1 chip and USB. Overall timeline for support, as with every year, we cannot still have an estimate by when the Open Core Legacy Patcher will be supported. So, right now, it's something very different because some good things require a lot of time. So, Venture 2025 is an estimate with Open Core Legacy Patcher version 3.0.0 because the additional T2 models is also still causing a problem on both Sequoia and also MacOS Tahoe. So, like if Apple releases the Open code layers of well, the MacOS Tahoe in September or October. We can estimate, like for example, on October 2nd, if MacOS uh, Tahoe was released, the Open Core Legacy Patcher would release two days before that or even two days after that. So you do not need to worry. But before that, there will be a nightly version for the version 3.0.0 if the things are prepared early, earlier. So, but still. I recommend you should not install MacOS Tahoe on your unsupported Macs because the Open Core Legacy Batches do not recommend beta updates. For suppose, if you even try to install, you can actually break your Mac. It's from my experience because before MacOS Sequoia, I installed MacOS Sonoma and it was working great, but however, I don't know why the beta updates were on, and it installed MacOS 14.4 beta 2. And guess what? My Mac was stuck on Apple logo, and I was just thinking, what happened to my Mac? So I just went through the Barboss boot and all of the progress, and I found out my Mac accidentally installed the beta update. So I had to go back to MacOS Big Sur, and after that, I support. I waited. I waited for MacOS Sequoia and reinstalled the unsupported MacOS. So, in my opinion, you should wait until Open Code Legacy Patcher provides a real support. And before ending the video, 
Here is Open Core Collective. For the Open Core Legacy Panther, you can make some donations. And one of the main donators is Mr. Macintosh. He provides $250 for the Open Core Legacy Panther. And, okay, let's hope for the best. And tell me about your opinions in the comment below. Like and subscribe and share. Bye.